glycerol. Now we were talking about secretion from the liver. Now what is the role of the liver? Liver is the largest gland. We were talking that there are some glands also present in our body along with the alimentary canal. So liver is the largest gland in the body and is situated in the upper part of the abdomen, in the upper part of the abdomen on the right side. Now it secretes the bile juice that is stored in the gall bladder. Now where is this juices are stored? They are stored in a gall bladder. Bladder means like a, for example, polythene you have. In the same way this liver has a gall bladder where it stores this bile juice. Okay. Yes. One more gland was there, pancreas. Now it is a large cream colored gland located just below the stomach. Now when the stomach finishes, it is a pancreatic pancreas which is present. So here you can see the pancreas. So once the stomach, the stomach is this side. Okay, right side. So when this ends, here we can see the pancreas. So it is a large cream color gland located just below the stomach and the pancreatic juice acts on this carbohydrate, fat and protein and then convert them into glucose, fatty acid and glycerol and proteins are converted into amino acids. So this pancreatic juice is breaking them into the simpler forms of glucose, fatty acid and glycerol and amino acids. We can see the diagram here. Yes, this is the liver. It is storing the bile juice here in the gallbladder. That green color, you can see like a polythene. Here it is keeping all these juices. Then you have a pancreas here, which is like a leaf-like structure. Green color. Okay, can we proceed? Yes. Now, digestion is completed now. Now we go to the next step that is the absorption. Now the small intestine is the main region for the absorption of the digested food. So, small intestine is performing the complete digestion and the next step is absorption also. After it absorbs, now, the, and how it is absorbing? It is because the inner surfaces of the small intestine has numerous finger-like projections called as villi. Villi, you can have, you, uh, did you notice that uh, see in the paramecium, we have that thread-like structures outside Yes, in the same with this willy, you can see here, if you can see the red color one, it has been denoted like a hair like structures, okay, you can see. So, this willy like projections, it increases. Now, why these are present? So, whatever absorption, it, come, it increases the surface area for the rapid absorption of the digested food. And the digested food now, with the help of willy, is absorbed through the walls of the small intestine and goes into our blood. So now blood transport, so the transportation system also comes into action. So whatever absorbed food is there, now it is being sent to the blood. Now, after I send, the blood now carries this useful. Now it sends to the all the part. Now blood is flowing throughout our body. The blood is carrying this absorbed food to all the cells in our body, to each and every part of the body from top to bottom. So the blood carries these useful substances to each and every part of the body and the body uses these substances for what? For the growth, for the maintenance, for repairing, for multiplying. So all these metabolic activities, whatever functions our body is able to do is because of the assimilation by the, all the body parts. And who is providing this absorbed food to every, every part is the blood. Right? So the absorption of the digested food and its utilization. Whatever absorbed food is there, it has to be utilized also. Sometimes we are eating good, but still that food is not used. Some people after eating good diet, still they are low in the energy level. Why? Because there is no complete utilization of the whatever energy they are stored in the body. That's why we say eat good food, exercise. When you exercise, your body gets energy. When you drink lots of water, your whole cells get water, they get replenished, they get nourished with the nutrients. Right? That's why we, when we talk about eat good food, exercise, have good sleep, that is why we are talking about the utilization of the food in the body. And when that takes place, that is called as assimilation. So food is getting assimilated in the body, which has been utilized for doing work. So the glucose, which is the final product of the carbohydrate, digestion is broken with the help of. Now this glucose, which is formed, the simple form of carbohydrate, it gets broken down with the help of oxygen. Now from where oxygen is coming? From the respiration, right? It is not that only digestive system is working. So my respiratory, my excretory system, 
my transport the circulatory system will not work there are different systems in our in our body which are working together that's why we say our body is a complex structure which is made of different types of organ systems and each organ system like digestive system circulatory system excretory system respiratory system there's a whole system which are in themselves are made up of different types of organs and what are these organs made up of different types of tissues and the tissues are made up of the smallest unit of life that is called as cells okay now so when we are taking in this glucose when this glucose is the final product of the carbohydrate digestion it is broken down with the help of oxygen which we are taking in through the respiration right that is why we say when you exercise the good level of oxygen goes into the body and then when oxygen level is good you feel fresh at that time right we stay fit so the food whatever is there it gets broken down and we get energy in the form of atps that you will study in your higher classes what is atps okay so it is broken down with the help of oxygen into the carbon dioxide and water and this carbon dioxide is thrown out of the body we exhale it out yes and water by the perspiration by urination it comes out from the excretory system right so amino acids now what is amino acid the protein has been converted into amino acids that is used for the growth and repair of the worn out cells glucose is for energy amino acids is for growth and repair that is what we talk about proteins and then fats when we say again energy so the fatty acid and glycerol it stores below the skin has energy reserves so the people who eat but they do not exercise they do not indulge in the physical activities so most of mostly in, in many cases there is a chance that they may become more fat so to what we people do nowadays we do dieting so actually we should not diet we should have a food but the proper intake of the food at the proper interval of the time is very very important okay and the last process is digestion the undigested and the unabsorbed food now whatever be whatever was supposed to be absorbed it has been absorbed by the body so the undigested and unabsorbed food moves into the large intestine to a part called as colon where some amount of water and salts are absorbed from the undigested food still the body doesn't want to leave this undigested food again it will try to secrete or absorb the water and salts now from where it does in the last part of the large intestine here here it is a colon where some amount of water and salts are absorbed from the undigested food and the remaining undigested food that moves to the second part that is called as rectum here here it is stored and removed from the body through the anus that's why we go for the when we go to the washroom after eating food we don't immediately go to the washroom right there is a time gap why it is there because the food is getting absorbed or the undigested food is getting stored so that is how our processes are working so here it is stored and removed from the body through the anus the exist of this waste material is regulated by the anal sphincter sphincter means there is a sphincter means it is like a contraction right waste material all the waste material doesn't come at one go it takes a time so it is continuously expansion there contraction there right so when the un waste material has to come out it is expands it creates a pressure with the pressure the food is pushed out of the body so this process is known as digestion and digestion should also be very good because whenever you visit a doctor if you are not keeping well what a doctor asks you the first question are you passing your stools correctly is there any problem in passing the stools that is the question now it means if you are having problem in passing the stool there must be some problem in your digestive So here we finish with the, all the five processes of nutrition in human beings. That is all the digestive system. In the next class, it is not only in the next class we will be going to discuss about the nutrition in herbivores. As we have discussed in the introduction of the chapter, that the mode of nutrition is very different in the carnivores, in the omnivores, and in the herbivores. We have discussed about the small, simple organisms. from amoeba to paramecium to hydra to spider to frog to human beings the next comes the herbivores the grass eating animals those are called as ruminants so in the next class we are going to study about the process of nutrition in grass eating animal that is ruminants then the role of digestive system of ruminants 
okay so i expect everyone to be present for the next class also now your friend is bidding bye to you stay safe stay healthy